Loretta Lynn allowed us into her home with one request. Do not touch the pictures because it disturbs the ghosts. Loretta Lynn is one of the most popular music stars in American history. Writer DeFrancesco is five years old, competing in the Pee Wees. Loretta Lynn has had 52 top 10 singles, 16 number one hits, four Grammy Awards, and is among the most awarded women in country music history. Ryan Owens rides an eight-year-old Kawasaki in the 450 C-Class. At 13 years old, Loretta Lynn got married. Okay, then I'm gonna have you fill this out for me. Adam C. and Cirillo is 14 and rides for Team Green in the Super Mini Class. Loretta Lynn traveled the country in this tour bus. The Bodwin family travels the country in this camper. Why should the top amateur motocross championship in America be held on Loretta Lynn's ranch? At this point, we had no idea. After documenting the AMA Pro Motocross Nationals for 10 years, we have heard stories of Loretta Lynn's from the mouths of the greatest motocross riders in the world. Stories of 95 degree heat. What are you doing? I'm too hot. Go. Hundreds of motos, thousands of participants, and passionate families. We were told to go to Loretta's, and we were terrified. Why will this bib hang among their pro motocross trophies forever? In order to find the answer, we had to do what we have always done, go to the heart. Why we do it, I don't know. I don't think I'd ever take anything away from them, too. I was brought up a certain way, broke, lived in a housing project till I was 22. My parents had nothing. I never got to do this. When you have kids and you look back at your own life, you want them to have a better life. It's easy to drive 12 hours to a track or you know, to work till 2 in the morning on a motorcycle time and time again. We do it with kids' weddings. We do it with everything. You know, they want a pair of Nikes to take to school. You know, who goes out and buys them? Mom and dad. You think you're fulfilling their wants and needs, you're fulfilling your own inside you because you want them to be accomplished. I only have two kids, and if you think about it, you're here for a split second. And if this is something that they love and they want to do, you make it happen for them. Fun just doing the jumps. Doing the corners, hitting them good, fast and smooth. Having fans cheer you on, you can look to your corner and you can see them cheering you on. It's like I'm on my own, I'm free. If I'm stressed about something, I can just go ride and it takes it all away. I love it so much and I could watch the same Supercross race over and over and over and over again and never get bored of it. Tell me about it your experience. Tell me about how fun it was. Fun. Like, whenever you land a jump perfect, you'd be like, oh, I just did that jump. People say kids get burnt out and stuff like that. Really, I don't understand how that happens. Like, until my doctor tells me that I can't get out of the house anymore, I'm going to be riding. I'm going to be riding until the day I die, most likely. At first glance, it seems to be the same kinds of passion you would see at the local Little League baseball field. A kid's love for their sport and a parent's love for their child. But love can only be measured by the hardships that attempt to break it. This sport has made us a better family, and she's my best friend because of it. I have no better friend in the world than her. 
she calls me up at work to ask me about things that are unrelated, but they're very related because the bond that we create is because we're suffering together. I had full-on ankle reconstruction. The forearm, I crashed on a start and stuck my hand out, and I broke both of these, and the bone popped out through there. It wasn't very pretty. My humerus had the suspension that wasn't working very well and twisted my arm out literally to the point where my bone broke. It twisted around so much. It's a battle zone out there. Every single person in the line is to be respected as a rider and most importantly as a person. They get here because they have battled through it. There's a lot of kids that are not here that qualify to be here, and they broke something the day before or the week before. That itself, I think, teaches you, teaches you to overcome obstacles in life. Tim Cotter has been coming to Loretta Lynn's for 30 years. As director of MX Sports, this is his event. I just shut this gate 10 minutes ago. Uh, if my kid's a star baseball player, I'm out a couple of camps, $400 for a bat and a glove. But when you step into this, you had a $8,000 motorcycle, and then you add $8,000 worth of upgrades to it, and then you got to have a $200,000 motorhome, and at $5 a gallon, they travel all over the country riding different races and try to make it to Loretta Lens. You just got to sit back and say, wow, this is passion. This guitar was given to Loretta Lynn as an anniversary present from her husband. A year later, she was signing her first recording contract. In motocross, a Cobra 50 is often a Christmas or birthday present that launches a career. Cobra was designed around this race. The company was, not just the bike. In the past 15 years of racing since this class has been instated, we've won all the titles except for one in 2001. The really cool thing about being involved in the sport at this level, there's a certain innocence with the kids. All 42 competitors out here, those kids are just passionate. They were born to race dirt bikes, all of them were. I tell parents all the time, motocross is not a sport you push your kids into, they're born into it. Motocross for me is foreign. I didn't know this whole thing even really existed. He saw it on TV and was hooked. Couldn't take him off of it. He wants to ride every single day from sun up to sundown. He loves it. He loves it. I would get home from work. He would be waiting with his little PW50. And I couldn't get undressed fast enough to take him to this little grass field. And I would sit on the back of a pickup truck, and he would burn tank after tank. He was miserable if, you, if he wasn't <laughs> on the motorcycle. I mean, miserable. When Ryder got off the track, Lyle Robertson asked him, do you know what you just did? And he says, I want to race. He doesn't know the importance of how big this race was. He's just a kid. He just has no clue on what this has started. At five years old, Ryder DeFrancesco is the youngest Loretta Lynn's champion ever. 10 years on the road, 4,000 hours of riding, and a couple hundred thousand dollars from now, DeFrancesco will probably be here. This is the Super Mini class. They are the best 42 riders in America between 12 and 15 years old. And they are preparing for the biggest race of their lives. If you prove yourself here, the next stop is the pros. Some are feeling the weightlessness of accomplishment. Others, the burden of expectations. This is motocross prodigy Adam C. and Cirillo. This is Adam's mother. God bless them, please. God bless them. And this is Adam's father. Come on, you can do it. There's so much that goes into that gate drop. You watch your son. Everything he sacrifices, how hard he works, all this goes into that little pin on the gate. And when that thing drops, it just, 
my mind starts going crazy, is the bike ride. It could be a flat tire. Anything could happen. Into the start, it's the number 92 machine with a huge hole shot. Yeah, buddy, good shot! Ah, easy. This is a risky sport. I understand the risks. I can't dwell on them. He's so passionate about it that if I were to ever tell him, because of my fears, that he can't do what he wants to do and live his dream and pursue his goals, I just think that could be worse than anything that could happen to him on the track. Here in this first moto, it's going to be number 92, Adam Cincerillo. Is it over? Can you comment on the safety issues? Oh, my God, this is going to be tough for me. Go, do it. Come on, baby. Hold on a second. You did good. That 159 was solid, but I don't like the injury stuff. Ugh. Do you just want to move on? Come back to it? Yeah, let's come back to it. Okay. At Loretta's, injuries derail dreams all the time. After winning a championship last year, Tyler Berriman trained all year with the hope that a good result at Loretta's would earn him a pro contract. All right, buddy, you can do it. I love you. While the eyes of the industry were watching the track, Tyler found himself reeling in pain after two laps of racing. Ah! I sit in a chair. Can't sit down. Can't sit down. He had crashed and been run over twice. But while dreams are often obstructed, they are hard to kill. This morning, I went out for my next moto. I tried to ride. I did the whole moto 20 minutes. Couldn't sit down, decided to go get it checked out, and it turned out I fractured my tailbone. I just try to be really supportive of everything that he does and tell him, you know, that I love him no matter what, whether he crashes, wins. He's got what it takes. This is a replica of Loretta Lynn's first home. In her song, Coal Miner's Daughter, she sings, we were poor, but we had love. That's one thing daddy made sure of. He shuffled coal to make a poor man's dollar. Lisa Owens is a secretary at Canton McKinley High School. Gary Owens is a truck driver for Beaver Excavation Company. While Peter Bodwin is removing trees in Landsborough, Massachusetts, Michelle Bodwin homeschools their sons, Justin and Jake, on the road. For both these families, most of their money goes to their sons racing. The money, if I had to put a figure on it in four years, I'd honestly say three to 400,000. I spent $250 today on clutches. Am I ready? No, ready? no, no, no. I want to puke. I've said it a hundred times to her, if I have to go to work at Burger King at night after my other job, I don't want to, but I will. You ready? Oh, come on, baby. This is what I do before he goes out, it sucks. There'll be 41, 42 kids on that gate, and the kid that you're gonna know is Jake, because he's gonna be sitting on his bike, just like this. He doesn't get nervous. It's awesome. Yeah, he's pretty relaxed, which is good, but I'm not at all. It wouldn't be so hard and so stressful if we were just at a local race. But this is where you strive to get all year long. And so when you're here, the only place you want your kid, basically, is on that podium. Probably the most nervous time for me is during the whole shot, because the whole shot means a lot. Come on, Jake, come on, Jake, come on, Jake, come on, Jake, please go, please. Please. God, please, let him get a good old shot. Please go! 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 Good, Jake, go! Go, buddy, go! Oh, God. Oh, God, Jake, go! Go, go! I gotta go down. Where is he? Where would Jay, where is he? Can you see him? Oh my God, freaking second to last. Oh my God, John! Please God, please God, go! You try to get 
travel across the country, you spend tons of money, yet when you're watching the race, it looks like you're going through absolute hell. Does it look that way? It, it <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. Come on, Jake, pass these two. Come on. Come on, God, turn it on. Come on, Jake, go, buddy, go. Get up there, get up there, go, go, go. Seven, eight, nine, eight, ten. God, I'm going to pass out in a minute. It is hell, but it's the best hell ever. Bowen just clicking off one fast lap after another. Bowen drops it down to a 2.18. 37th to 5th. Oh, my God, he's 5th. He's 5th. Holy John, he's 5th. It just never bothers me. It just doesn't. You're insane. Why? Is it really? <laughs> Whoa, and there it goes. He tosses it away no. over the camelback. And he fell back in 14th. All right, all right, that's all right. They're 11 and 12. Next week, they're going to be 16 and 17. And that's going to be it. They're going to have girls. They're going to have cars. And that's no it. Girls. We're going to be done. No. no, no girls. Oh my god. So proud of you. Puke. Dude. Throw it up. Puke if you got. What I get? Sixth. Dude. I'm flying. Here. Hey. I'm proud of you. You went down. You got back up. You're right here. Hey. You're still in the running, dude. You're still in the running. I mean, it's about us being with them. And. I wouldn't trade it. I don't have that much of a regret. Nothing. Financially speaking, the Owens family barely made it here. Their motorhome and trailer are borrowed. The air conditioning in their home had to be left unfixed all summer. We prioritize, don't get the new car. Whatever you can go without, you go without. And why would anybody want to stop their child? We put too much into them to not let them have their dream. It's a dream he's had for quite a while. Ryan Owens will be racing in the 450 C class. For every rider in this class, this is their first trip to Loretta's. I remembered my friend last year coming here for the first time in C class also. He actually threw up on the line before he took off. And I was just thinking, don't puke, don't puke. We just want to let people know that we have a place here, too. It's not all about being able to go pro. It's not all about getting paid to do this and make a living at it. There's a certain honor to go to the line. We'll take that. A new 450cc dirt bike cost around $8,000. The eight-year-old dirt bike that Ryan Owens is riding costs $1,000. But as some say in motorsports, you run what you brung and pray you brought enough. Where's he at? I said, where's he at? It had been a summer of sacrifices for the Owens family. And at the biggest moment of Ryan's life, the 2003 Kawasaki let go. I didn't know if they did anything with something that old. One of the privileges of qualifying for Loretta's is factory support. Unfortunately, these support rigs only stock the most current parts. I saw what the bike was, which is a two-stroke, and how old it is. I explained to him, we're not going to have parts. There's no way I can help you. He begged, pleaded, and borrowed. If, if there's any way I can find the parts, would you be willing to get the motor back and going so my son can race? I told them, if you find every part, every gasket, every seal, we can help you. Whether it is in a trailer or a factory semi, no one races without support. The same technicians that will rebuild Ryan's bike will rebuild Adam C. and Cirillo's before he races for an eighth Loretta Lynn's championship. Everyone sees racing, they see bikes, they see sponsored riders, but the biggest reward is helping people, making people happy. We came here asking why should the amateur nationals be held on Loretta's ranch. During an autograph signing that was becoming hours long, 
Loretta was asked why she was still there. She said, these people are my fans. Without these people, I am nobody. At Loretta's, you will see a 14-year-old sign a pro contract and a five-year-old crowned a champion. But you will also see that your most powerful resource is the people around you. Loretta's is when you can't tell who is more passionate, the parents or the kids. Loretta's is a father trying to give his son his dream. Come on in. When it became clear that the parts his son needed would not arrive on time, Gary Owens tracked them down, drove to the UPS hub, and returned in time to rebuild the bike. Your kids have dreams. Our dreams are that they get to fulfill them. This is it. This is a win-win situation. He's got his piece. I got my piece. This is really the story of Loretta Lynn's. That starting line has been in the same area for 30 years. It just doesn't get any better than the point when those 42 bikes head into turn number one. And moms and dads are screaming and yelling. And here we go. This is what it's all about. I know now on my deathbed that I helped him fulfill his dream. And nobody's going to take that away from me either, you know?